When most people think of trout, they picture that classic speckled fish from mountain streams or stocked ponds. But here's the thing that'll blow your mind. There are actually dozens of trout species scattered across the globe, each one perfectly adapted to their unique environment. We're talking about fish that have conquered everything from desert alkaline lakes to pristine Arctic waters. Some of these trout are massive predators that'll attack anything that moves, while others are delicate beauties that exist in only one lake on the entire planet. Today, we're diving deep into the incredible world of trout species. And trust me, by the end of this journey, you'll never look at these fish the same way again. We'll explore giants that can grow larger than most people, ancient lineages that have been swimming the same waters since before the last ice age, and species so rare that scientists are still discovering new things about them. Let's start with the fish that changed everything. Rainbow trout represent one of the most fascinating success stories in the fish world. These aren't just your average hatchery rainbows we're talking about. The rainbow trout complex includes some of the most adaptable and diverse fish on the planet. What makes them absolutely incredible is their life history flexibility. Some rainbows spend their entire lives in tiny mountain creeks, never venturing more than a few miles from where they hatched. Others become massive ocean-going beasts called steelhead that travel thousands of miles through the Pacific before returning to their natal streams. Here's where it gets wild. Rainbow trout and steelhead are literally the same species, but they live completely different lifestyles. It's like having identical twins where one becomes a homebody and the other becomes a world traveler. The scientific name Onkorhynchus mycus comes from the original Kamchatka Peninsula specimens, where local people called these fish Mikija. That connection to Siberia tells you just how far these fish have spread across the northern Pacific. The steelhead form is where rainbows really show their incredible potential. These fish develop larger, more powerful tails and streamlined silver bodies perfect for ocean life. When they return to freshwater to spawn, they gradually transform back into the colorful rainbow pattern we recognize, complete with that distinctive pink stripe running down their sides. The longer they stay in freshwater, the more vibrant their colors become. Some steelhead can reach massive sizes, with the world record rainbow weighing in at an incredible 48 pounds from Saskatchewan's Lake Diefenbaker. But if you think rainbows are impressive, wait until you meet the master of wariness and cunning. Brown trout earned their reputation as the most challenging opponent any angler can face. While other trout might attack flies with reckless abandon, browns are calculating predators that seem to study every presentation before deciding whether to strike. The larger specimens are often completely nocturnal, hiding under cut banks during the day and only emerging under cover of darkness to hunt. Brown trout represent the ultimate success story of fish introduction. Originally native to Europe, West Asia, and parts of North Africa, these fish have conquered waters on every continent except Antarctica. Their scientific name, Salmo trutta, literally means salmon trout, and they were the very first trout species described by Carl Linnaeus back in 1758. What makes brown so successful is their incredible adaptability. They've evolved three distinct life forms, or morphs, depending on their environment. River browns, known as Salmotruta morphifario, are the classic stream dwellers with their golden brown coloration and distinctive red spots circled in blue halos. Lake browns, or Morpha lacustris, grow larger and often develop more silvery coloration. Then there are the sea trout, the anadromous morph that migrates to the ocean and returns to spawn. These sea-run browns can reach incredible sizes and develop the silver coloration typical of ocean-going salmonids. The feeding behavior of brown trout changes dramatically as they grow. Young browns feed primarily on insects and small invertebrates, but as they mature, they become increasingly piscivorous. Large browns are apex predators that will attack anything from small trout to mice, frogs, and even small birds that venture too close to the water's surface. Their intelligence and wariness make them the holy grail for many trout anglers. Now let's talk about a fish that isn't technically a trout at all, but has fooled people for centuries. Brook trout are actually members of the char genus Salvolinus, making them more closely related to lake trout and arctic char than to true trout. But calling them brookies just sounds better than brook char, so the name stuck. These fish represent the most beautiful salmonid in North America, hands down. The brook trout's scientific name, Salvolinus fontinalis, means fountain char, referring to the cold, spring-fed waters they prefer. 
Their coloration is absolutely stunning, with olive green backs transitioning to lighter sides, covered in red spots with blue halos. The dorsal fin displays an intricate vermiculation pattern that looks like a maze, while the lower fins show distinctive white leading edges, followed by black stripes and vibrant orange coloration. Brook trout were America's first destination fish. Back in the 1800s, trains would transport wealthy anglers from New York and Boston to the pristine mountains of Vermont and Maine just for the chance to catch these square tails. They readily attack flies of all kinds and fight with incredible spirit for their size. During spawning season, the colors intensify dramatically, especially in males whose bellies become brilliant orange-red with distinct black stripes along their sides. What makes brookies truly special is their requirement for pristine water conditions. They're like the canaries in the coal mine of freshwater ecosystems. If brook trout are thriving in a stream, you know that water is clean and cold. They need water temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit to survive long term, and they're extremely sensitive to pollution and habitat degradation. The cutthroat trout complex represents one of the most diverse and geographically varied groups of salmonids in North America. Named for the distinctive red slash marks on their throats, Cutthroat trout were the fish that sustained the Lewis and Clark expedition across the western United States. William Clark himself is honored in their scientific name, Onkerhinchus clarkii. Recent genetic studies have revealed that what we once considered a single highly variable species is actually four distinct species, each with multiple subspecies adapted to specific river basins and geographic regions. The diversity within this group is staggering. You've got the massive Lahontan cutthroat that once thrived in the ancient inland sea of the Great Basin, growing to sizes that rivaled salmon. These fish adapted to alkaline desert waters that would kill most other trout species. Then there's the Yellowstone cutthroat, the iconic fish of America's first national park. These golden beauties with their distinctive spotting patterns have been the subject of intense conservation efforts as they face pressure from habitat, loss, and hybridization with introduced rainbow trout. The West Slope cutthroat represents the original strain that Lewis and Clark encountered, while the coastal cutthroat has developed the ability to move between fresh and salt water like a miniature steelhead. Each cutthroat subspecies tells a story of isolation and adaptation. When the glaciers retreated after the last ice age, populations became separated in different river basins and evolved unique characteristics. Some developed the ability to survive in high alkaline lakes, others adapted to the extreme cold of high mountain streams, and still others learned to navigate the complex estuarine environments where rivers meet the sea. The conservation story of cutthroat trout is both tragic and hopeful. Several subspecies have already been lost forever, victims of habitat destruction, dam construction, and competition from introduced species. But intensive restoration efforts have brought others back from the brink of extinction, proving that with dedication and proper management, we can restore these incredible fish to their native waters. Moving deeper into the char complex that masquerades as trout, we encounter the absolute giant of freshwater North America. Lake trout are the monsters lurking in the depths of our coldest, deepest lakes. And when I say monsters, I'm not exaggerating. These prehistoric-looking beasts can live for over 40 years and reach weights exceeding 40 pounds. The scientific name Salvalinus namaikush comes from the Ojibwe word namegos, and these fish have been the stuff of indigenous legends for thousands of years. What sets lake trout apart from their smaller char cousins is their incredible longevity and deep water lifestyle. While brook trout might live five or six years, lake trout are just hitting their stride at 20 years old. They inhabit the cold, oxygen-rich depths of glacial lakes, often cruising at depths exceeding 100 feet where the water temperature never rises above 50 degrees. Their bodies are perfectly adapted for this deep water existence, with large pectoral fins for maneuvering in the depths and a deeply forked tail built for sustained swimming. The coloration of lake trout reflects their deep water habitat. Their backs are dark gray to almost black, fading to lighter gray or silver on the sides, all covered with irregular white or pale yellow spots. Unlike the red spots of brook trout, lake trout spots are always light colored, helping them blend with the dappled light filtering down from the surface. During spawning season, males develop a slight reddish tinge to their fins, but they never display the brilliant colors of their smaller relatives. Lake trout spawning behavior is unlike any other salmonid. 
Instead of building reds in gravel like most trout and salmon, lake trout broadcast spawn over rocky reefs in the depths of their lakes. The eggs settle into crevices between rocks, where they'll incubate through the long winter months. This spawning strategy works perfectly in the stable environment of deep glacial lakes, but makes lake trout extremely vulnerable to habitat disruption. But if lake trout represent the giants of the char world, bull trout are the apex predators of western mountain streams. These fish are the wolves of the waterways, and their scientific name Salvolinus confluentis hints at their preference for the confluence zones where streams meet. Bull trout have some of the most specific habitat requirements of any salmonid, and those requirements tell you everything about the pristine nature of their environment. Bull trout need water that never exceeds 64 degrees Fahrenheit, which confines them to the coldest, highest quality streams in the Rocky Mountain region. They require stable stream channels with complex cover, clean, spawning, gravel, and completely unobstructed migration corridors. If any of these elements are compromised, bull trout populations crash. This makes them the ultimate indicator species for ecosystem health in the American West. What makes bull trout truly remarkable is their predatory lifestyle. Unlike most char that feed primarily on insects and small invertebrates, trout are voracious fish eaters from an early age. Young bulls will attack anything that moves, including other trout species, sculpins, whitefish, and even small mammals that fall into the water. As they mature, they become increasingly pasivorous, with some populations feeding almost exclusively on other fish. The life history strategies of bull trout are incredibly complex, rivaling even the rainbow trout in their diversity. Some populations remain resident in small streams their entire lives, while others migrate throughout entire river basins following food sources and spawning opportunities. The adfluvial form lives in lakes but returns to tributaries to spawn, often traveling hundreds of miles. There's even a rare anadromous form that ventures into saltwater, though this marine form is critically rare. Bull trout coloration reflects their predatory nature. Their olive green to dark gray backs fade to pale yellow or white bellies, with the characteristic light spots of the char genus scattered across their sides. But it's the gives away their predatory lifestyle. Bull trout have large mouths with prominent teeth, built for grabbing and holding struggling prey fish. Their eyes are positioned slightly forward, giving them better depth perception for hunting. Now let's venture into truly exotic territory with some trout species that most people have never heard of. The Gila trout represents one of the rarest and most geographically restricted trout species in North America. Found only in a handful of streams in the Gila wilderness of New Mexico and Arizona, these fish are living relics from a time when the Southwest was much wetter and cooler. Gila trout are absolutely gorgeous fish with golden yellow bodies covered in distinctive black spots. What makes their spots unique is their size and distribution. Unlike the small, numerous spots of rainbow trout, Gila trout have fewer, larger spots that are concentrated toward the rear of their bodies. Their coloration is so distinctive that you could never mistake a Gila trout for any other species. The story of Gila trout is one of survival against impossible odds. These fish once inhabited streams throughout the Gila River Basin, but habitat destruction, water diversions, and competition from introduced species reduced their range by over 90%. At one point, pure Gila trout existed in only five small streams, making them one of the most endangered fish species in North America. What's remarkable about Gila trout is their adaptation to desert mountain streams. These fish survive in waters that experience extreme temperature fluctuations and seasonal flow variations that would stress most other trout species. During summer months, stream flows can drop to mere trickles, forcing Gila trout to survive in isolated pools until monsoon rains restore flow connections. Even more restricted is the Mexican golden trout, found only in high elevation streams of Mexico's Sierra Madre Occidental. These fish represent the southernmost population of native trout in North America surviving in an environment that combines high-altitude conditions with tropical latitude influences. The result is a fish that has adapted to intense UV radiation, dramatic daily temperature swings, and the unique seasonal patterns of Mexico's mountain regions. Mexican golden trout display the most intense golden coloration of any trout species. Their bodies literally shimmer like molten gold in the clear mountain streams they inhabit. This brilliant coloration isn't just beautiful, it's functional providing protection against the intense mountain sunlight at tropical latitudes. 
the spots are typically concentrated along the lateral line and toward the tail, similar to their Gila trout relatives. The habitat requirements of Mexican golden trout are incredibly specific. They need cold, well-oxygenated water at elevations above 8,000 feet, where temperatures remain cool even in Mexico's warm climate. These streams are fed by springs and snowmelt from the highest peaks, creating isolated aquatic islands in an otherwise arid landscape. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of these desert mountain trout is their feeding behavior. Mexican golden trout have become incredibly efficient at exploiting the brief but intense productivity pulses that occur during Mexico's distinct wet and dry seasons. During the summer monsoons, terrestrial insects are abundant, and the trout gorge themselves to build fat reserves for the lean dry months ahead. The spawning behavior of both Gila and Mexican golden trout has adapted to the unpredictable nature of desert stream flows. Unlike trout in more stable environments that spawn on rigid schedules, these desert species have evolved flexibility in their reproductive timing. They can delay or accelerate spawning depending on water conditions, ensuring their eggs have the best chance of survival in an environment where streams can go from flood to trickle in a matter of days. Conservation efforts for these southwestern trout species involve some of the most challenging restoration work in North America. Biologists must not only restore habitat and remove invasive species, but also maintain the genetic purity of populations that have been isolated for thousands of years. Each stream represents a unique evolutionary lineage that, once lost, can never be replaced. So there you have it, folks. From the adaptable rainbow trout conquering oceans and streams alike, to the cunning brown trout that'll outsmart you every single time, from the stunning brook trout that aren't even trout at all, to the diverse cutthroat complex with subspecies scattered across the American West. We've covered the monster lake trout lurking in our deepest waters, the predatory bull trout that need pristine conditions to survive, and those incredible desert survivors like the Gila and Mexican golden trout hanging on in isolated mountain streams.